Welcome back to my YouTube channel. Uh, we've got uh, Sol Bamba here, and we're here now to talk exclusively about his time at Middlesbrough and all of the questions that you'll uh, that you want to know about his time at the club. So, um, yeah, please feel free to subscribe to the channel. And um, and Sol, welcome back. Um, obviously, we're talking about the uh, the summer that you were uh, that you arrived at Middlesbrough. So um, your your Cardiff at uh, sorry your contract at Cardiff came to uh, came to an end. Yeah. Um, and uh, obviously you were looking for a, a new club. So how, how did the uh, the move to Middlesbrough come about? Well, it was purely, to be fair, Phil, I think people think it was planned because obviously it was Warnock and, uh, you know, the relationship we got. But it wasn't. It was purely like um, left Cardiff, um, went back up, up north and uh, asked um, the gaffer to come and train to keep fit. And, um, and he said yes. And I trained there for a couple of weeks. Um, and he worked out the gaffer thing. Um, I could I could have done the job um, uh, as a backup if 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 uh, if someone was missing or injured, and um, and that's how we come about. You know, it was it was wasn't planned or anything like that. Um, he was surprised how fit I was at the time. Um, we cover it obviously from a, from the cancer and all. I never he never really imagined I could have come back as fit as I was. Uh, I worked out all summer um, to make sure I was uh, I was fit. And um, and when he saw me train, and uh, he, he thought I could do a job, and it was the same with the players, you know. Players were saying like um, how fit and how good I was, and uh, I knew some of them to because I played against them over the years, and they were always saying like, you know, um, it'd be good if you could stay. So you know, it was a, uh, it was it was very very good, and it was pleasing because because of everything I went through, and to come back and train and uh, to have the the lads like um, telling me, you know, I uh, uh, fit. And uh, good, I look. It was. Uh, it made me feel much better, and uh, it was. Uh, it was very, very nice. Hmm. Absolutely, because obviously you'd only been given the uh, the all clear not too not too long before that. Yeah. So in terms of, um, I know you're, you're healthy in terms of the cancer, but I guess in terms of getting from that level of fitness up to elite level of fitness that you need to compete week in week out in the championship, it's it's quite a big ask. So how how exactly. difficult did you kind yeah. of find that journey to to get yourself, I guess, up to professional football uh, standard of fitness? Yeah. No, you're absolutely put spot on, Phil. I think, and you know, you can work out all you want during the summer with with fitness guys and go to gym and everything, but it's not the same to to be fit, uh, much fit at the championship level. And until I played a couple of games, I wouldn't know. You know, I know I was fit enough to. To train, um, could I play Tuesday, Saturday? That was another question. So, you know, I just, um, you know, with my experience and been playing like over, nearly over twenty years, um, I just train as the, 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 the best I could and try to be fit the best the, the best I could as well, and um, and take it from there. And what was very good is the, the gaffer let me do some uh, friendly games with, with with Middlesbrough, so that sort of give me an idea where I was, you know, in terms of. Uh, of fitness, you know, I remember we play York, I think, and we play Wolverham as well. And I played the 90 minute, and that was that was very, very good, and it helped me. Um, but I was I was still behind, you know, um, and you know the training helped me um, through through the season to get to get better and better. And obviously, the minute I start playing games, the more games you play, the the, the fitter you get. So, you know, it was um, it was hard, very very difficult. Um, but I couldn't ask for a better club. Better manager, a group of players as well. We had to 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 restart my career after what I had. To be honest, because it's a very very good family club. It was a good group of people, and obviously it was a it was the gaffer as well. So he helped me massively. So obviously Neil Warnock was the person who brought you in. You're uh, you're spending this time getting yourself up to speed, building up your fitness. You're just starting to hit your stride in terms of fitness yeah. and that sort of thing. And then Neil Warnock's ousted and uh, replaced by uh, by Chris Wilder. As the manager. Yeah. So, what 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 was your opinion when when that happened? <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, it was tough, uh, but see, this time because I was older, I didn't take it the way I took it when um, um, Sven left Leicester. Because um, I swivelled not nowadays, you know, manager come and goes. Um, I felt, to be honest, and I said that to the board, and they, they sort of agree with me. Uh, um, uh, Neil Baza by saying that was harsh the way they, they got they got rid of the gaffer. But they were looking at um they were looking forward in terms of like they want to see like young manager for the next two, three years. And obviously they knew the gaffer was going to probably leave at the end of the season. So they decided to, you know, to pull the plug in October, I think if I remember well. Um instead of waiting for the for for the, um, the end of the season. So uh, I was disappointed. All the players were as well because you know they 
you know, you, you play, you don't play. Everyone loved the Rafa. He was good with everybody. Um, so he was tough. And um, Chris Wilder came in. Good guy, good manager. Um, I know him well. We're still in touch. Um, we hit the ground running. We start winning games, you know. Um, the way we were playing as well was good. You know, his training is, is enjoyable, good football. Um, and uh, But for me personally, because I, I wasn't playing that much, Obviously, that changed everything. But at my age and where I came from, you know, after everything I had, it, it, it wasn't about that. It was just enjoy being in a club, being in a football environment, and uh, whatever you give me a minute, I will enjoy it. So it was a, uh, it was good, but it was the transition was a bit difficult, um, not just for me, but for for the rest of the squad as well, because we all we all love the cover. So what in in terms of um, I guess in terms of training in terms of playing style what what were the sort of key differences from uh, going from Neil Warnock to uh, to Chris Wilder? Oh, he was um, uh, Chris Wilder was more intense uh, at it every day. Uh, when I mean at it, it's more like um, intensity. Um, whatever you, you you train as you as 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 you play, Warnock is more old school. Um, if if on Tuesday, if you don't want to train, it's fine. As long as you're here on a, on, on a Saturday, you can stay in the gym, do whatever you need to do. Chris Waldo having that, he's, everyone has to be on the pitch, everyone has to train um, every day. Um, you know, it's more of a modern uh, training training regime, really, uh, which is good. The lads, the lads enjoy it, we enjoyed it. And um, the training was good as well, you know, um, in terms of... Um, Passing the ball, whatever, whatever we were doing in a, in, a, in a training pitch, all the players enjoyed that. Um, and obviously, like you know, it's a business result. We were winning games, so when you win games, that brings confidence. So the manager can put points across. Player will lessen because we win games, you know. So it was it was very very good, and it was new, you know, for most of the player. Um, and we enjoyed that. Um, and like I said, when you win games, it's easier. So it was it was, and obviously we had that cup. Run as well. We helped, you know. Um, no, it was it was it was nice. Honestly, we we really enjoyed it um, with, with with Chris Wilder as well. But after, obviously, the season after it was a bit, you know, more difficult. But and to be fair, we we saw sort of see that coming. If I, if, if we're honest, um, but that's the story for another day. Hmm. Well, it's a story for about 10 minutes' time, so I'm going to come on to that. <laughs> but, uh, you, you mentioned um, you mentioned about the FA Cup run. Um, obviously, that was a, that was a particular highlight um, during that uh, during that season. Um, it all came down to uh, to one. Well, I say it all came down to it. Um, there was one memorable night at Old Trafford, uh, which yeah. you may remember quite fondly. It was uh, it was it was a short <laughs> night as far as you're concerned, but it was a oh, quite yeah. effective one, I guess. Um, so, obviously, to set the scene for people, um, FA Cup fifth round. Um, got through the 90 minutes, got through extra time, and it went to, um, well, it got to the back end of extra time. And, uh, and Chris Wilder brought you on with uh, with a couple of minutes left of, of extra time. So what what did he say to you when he, when he brought you on um, in the, the dying embers of the clash at Old Trafford? Well, make sure you don't make a mistake and we can see the goal. <laughs> no, to be honest, he said... He said to be go there, keep it calm because obviously you know we we know Trafford like it's a young group. The lads are you know it's a couple of minutes to go. Um, it's a bit of panic. Just calm everyone down and um, and and see us through to 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 the pens. Um, and you know well you can argue that's what I did. I didn't touch the ball. Um, so you know it was a uh, it was and it's always difficult. And I said that to him. We laughed after the game because. Regardless of like you're a young player or you 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 you're an experienced player, when you come on in the game last minute and you're a defender, the only thing you can do is a mistake, you know. So it's it's very very difficult. Um, so I'm glad I'm glad I didn't touch the ball and um, and we managed to go to the penalties. But I think what was um, what was important at that moment is everyone keep his head um, in the penalties, and I think that's 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 why the gaffer was uh, was good with me and me with him because. You know, it's, it's, I said to him straight away, I take one and I never take penalty. I played 20 years, I never take any, any penalties, you know. And um, he knew I said that to calm people down. And it, and if, every, if if I said I take one, the lad would be like, I come so it's taking a penalty. So I take one too. Mm-hmm. And Chris Waldo loved that. And he said to me straight away, he said, like, you know, that's that's why I need experienced player like yourself. And that's why um, 
you know, you need you need, you need player like this in in a squad to make sure he look after everybody. Because I didn't want it to take the penalty. Let me tell you, Phil. <laughs> well, I was going to ask this because often when managers bring on players with a couple of minutes left of uh, of extra time, it's either a goalkeeper who is a uh, penalty saving specialist, yeah, or it's typically a number nine who is exactly. renowned for putting the ball in the top corner from twelve yards. Yeah. Not a central defender who, as you say, has never taken a penalty in his career. So but was it always the plan that you were going to take a penalty or was it just purely a case of you stepping up in that moment? Yeah, no, it, it wasn't. It wasn't. It was never the plan. Um, and that's why when I say that straight away, I take one. Uh, Chris Wilder was happy, um, but it wasn't the plan at all. And I think because it's a young group, I think, and, um, you know, I just I can't even explain. I think it was just, it just came to me like I need to calm everyone down. Because like I said, I didn't want to take one because I'm no specialist. Um, you know, luckily it went in. Um, but it's just to make sure, and it's, it's my role as well. And me going to, to coaching and management, you know, I think sometimes you have to recognise when to step in and make sure, you know, you, you're you here for other people, you know. And, um, you know, um, Jody was there as well, Paddy, you know, great, great, great lads and leaders, you know, they were there as well say, saying they're going to take some. You know, because we had we had a very young group. As I was there, you know, um, but a very very young young players, and we wanted to make sure they're cool and uh, they enjoy the, the occasion. So that's why we did that. So you, you've admitted to me now that you didn't want to take a penalty in the first place. So uh, <laughs> fast, fast forward five minutes, and it's what <laughs> five four in the penalty shootout or whatever it is, and um, you're, you're standing twelve yards from uh, from the goal in front of the Stratford end. What are you thinking at that moment? Are you regretting it? <laughs> no, no, I don't regret it. But um, I was like, just, just don't miss it. You know, uh, try to try to hit the target. Um, but the thing is, I, I, I never take any. Um, in fact, sorry, I, 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 I did took one in African Cup of Nation final in two thousand twelve, uh, and I scored luckily as well. Um, I took it twice. I missed it first. The goalkeeper was off his line. And I took it again, so I was lucky. Um, but I think it's just when I, when you're there, you just try to hit the target and make sure you don't miss, you know. And uh, I was lucky; I, I managed to score. But it wasn't any regret. No, when I was in there, it wasn't a regret. When I when I put my hands up and I said I'm going to take it, you have to take responsibility after that. So it was um, it was no regret. But you know, um, I'm glad he went in. Let, let put it this way. <laughs> Absolutely, and obviously it led to. Uh... To wild celebrations, obviously knocking out Manchester United is a massive achievement for Middlesbrough in the, in the Championship. So, how 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 important was it for you to a be responsible for, I guess, scoring the winning penalty to send us through, but also, I guess, given everything that you've been through in the in the twelve months plus uh, before before that, how how good was it for you to enjoy a footballing moment like that, a footballing high? Ex I guess exactly, Phil. I think that was it, and I think that's why when you know people said. You know, you were like cool, laughing, this and this. But I think, you know, with everything I had, the 12 months before, you know, it was just, I was just happy to be here. You know, and don't get me wrong, I don't want to miss it. But even if I miss it, it's not the end of the world. You know, I've been through, you know, difficult times. So, you know, I just wanted to be, to, to be there and enjoy and, 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 and luckily went in. But after that, it's, it's just pure joy. You know, you, that's why you play football for, you know, women like this, you know, knocking out Man United, one of the biggest clubs in the world. The party after that with with well I I wasn't getting involved with the lads you know they party for two days but I went home with the missus you know um, but uh, it was it was great and I think that's what football is all about and um, that helped us as well for the for, for the rest of the season you know because when you beat a big team like this that give you confidence and uh, that's what Chris Wilder said you know if you doesn't matter how we done it it was the penalties but but doesn't matter how you done it you know you you you, you can beat big teams and uh, you have to bring that confidence to the league so. You know, it was huge, and even for for the club history as well. For us, you know, we're still talking about it when we when I meet the players. You know, it was a special moment for us. I mean, people still see that uh, that touch map on uh, on Twitter when it when it comes up, and it's uh, <laughs> yeah, it's just the one line from the other twelve yeah. yard line to the top corner. So it's, uh, it's the stuff of legends. Uh, <laughs> um, obviously, you um you spent you spent twelve months uh, with Middlesbrough of a full season. Uh, hugely popular with the players, hugely popular with the fans. From your point of view, who who were you closest to during that year? Who were the kind of people that you, um, I guess, became friends with and I guess yeah. are still in touch with now? Yeah, it's tough, Phil. You're going to put me in trouble there. 
no, honestly, and uh, it is actually everyone. And, um, you know, it's, I, I can't even, it's, it's hard to put it to word because it, it is very special and everyone will wear together. Um, and it's every single one at the club, you know, the, the, the secretary, the kid man, you know, they're all very, very good people and uh, they care about the club and they will do anything for you as well to try to help you out. Um, you know, like, I, I, I actually went um, a couple of months ago, I went to see um, um, to be able to see everyone, you know, and say hello to everyone and see the fans and and it's, it's a special club, but I was close to everyone. To be fair, the players we were, and because obviously I'm, a, I was the oldest player there, um, so you know I was sort of like being the uncle, like I said, and I hate when they call me like that. But uh, so making sure I look at, I look after everyone, and uh, I was close with with pretty much everyone. But I would say, Paddy and and Johnny, because we you know similar age, uh, we used to more stay together and have a coffee and talk and all this, but. Honestly, I was very, very close to, to all the players. And um, Lee Pelche, because Pels, I played with him at Leicester as well. I know Pels for 15 years. So I was very close with Pels as well. But, you know, we, we had a special relationship between uh, between the squad. So I, I would say I was close to everybody. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And obviously it was, um, it was, it was, I guess it was a short lived spell at Middlesbrough. You were, you left at the end of, um, at the end of that season. So um, obviously that, that kind of spelled the end of, uh, of your, your playing career as well. So was it was it kind of a case that um, was it was always the plan that it was kind of you wanted to do one more season, or did you have kind of a feeling it was a tricky the one of the be... campaign? Yeah, yeah. I've got to be honest with you. I think um, the, when I signed for Middlesbrough, I thought that would be my last year, and I did. I did say that. I remember the conversation with Warnock, and I said I can't. I think I can't finish in a better club. You know, we you good club. The fans very good with me. Everyone. But the season was going on, and um, I remember even having a conversation with Neil Baza, and he said, like, you know, you, you could do another year, you know, and it was it was up in the air, you know, asked the question and all that. Um, but obviously, Chris Waldo had that idea, was he wanted to bring other players, which I totally understand. And um, and after when I left, you know, I just I just I just decided to call it a day really because, like I said, I don't think I could have finished on a better on a better note. So that's that's why, but it was it was a question of maybe doing, you know, another year as a as a cover and learning as well as a as a coach there. Um, we asked the question, we talked about it, but it wasn't wasn't meant to be, unfortunately. Mm -hmm. Absolutely, and just just a couple more on I guess on on that time at Middlesbrough. So you, you mentioned before about Chris Wilder, and you mentioned about how it kind of like it started well, and then things kind of things started to go a little bit off the boil. And one of the the big the big talking points I guess was that he was linked with the the Burnley job um, towards yeah. the end of that season. Uh, there was a lot of speculation. Um, fans were getting a bit frustrated because he could have quite easily nipped it in the bud and said, not exactly. going, I'm staying here. That could have yeah. ended the whole thing, but it kind of rumbled on for a few weeks. So from, from your perspective as a player who was in that dressing room, what what was his relationship like with the players at that point? And what, what kind of happened in that time frame? Well, we, it's exactly like you guys feel. We we, we had the, it was similar to us where we, we were like, why are you not kidding it? Why are you not saying... Because to be honest, if if you wanted to go, it's not a problem. Because manager are like players, you know, they want to better themselves all the time. So at the time, Burnley were in the Premier League. Um, you know, if you want to go, you know, it's, it's up to you. But people will understand. But I think the mistake is made is it's, it's not being clear by saying like, listen, no, I'm staying here. I've got a project. I'm happy here. Or no, I want to go. And we were talking about it between ourselves and asking the same question. And I was close with him, to be fair. And we, we had that conversation. And he said that to me. He said, so I'm like you. I'm like every player. I'm, I want to better myself. So if the thing is right for me, I'll, I'll, I'll be going. And if it's not, I'll be staying here. But he said that to me. He didn't say that to, you know, the media or to the fans or to the board, to be clear. And I think that's, that was the first mistake. And after that, people start, you know, asking questions about himself and being, being, they were thinking like, is he, is he a selfish guy? Is he just here for himself? So he's going to do well and try to go. You know, players didn't really believe in him after that. We was all well and great as well at the time. So, you know, 
everything started getting a bit, you know, messy and um and he was unfortunate because I, I always said I like him. I think he's a he's a good man, he's a good man, first of all. He's a good manager. But I think on on on, on the Burnley link, I think he made he made a massive mistake. And I think that was the the start of his downfall, definitely. Hmm. So obviously Middlesbrough missed out on the on the playoffs at the end of that season. We finished finished seventh. Do you do you think that the, the uncertainty ended up having a, a negative impact on the squad in terms of maybe in terms of focus more than anything else. Yeah, I mean, listen, the, the thing is, I, I hate excuses, and you know, I said that all the time in the dressing room with players, but it definitely, it definitely impacted us 100% because we had a young group. Um, you know, I remember we played Huddersfield at home, we lost, that was a turning point. Um, and I think after that game, we, we had a meeting between ourselves. And we weren't happy because, um, you know, a few of the lads were mentioning, like, you know, the gaffer just have to be clear with us, is he going to go, is he not going to go? Um, you know, and I remember me, Johnny and Paddy and all that were saying, it, it doesn't matter because, you know, we want to take the club up. So try to make to try to make the playoff and go up. If the gaffer is here, good. If he's not, it doesn't matter. But it's easy to say for us and senior lads, but, you know, the rest of the lads were, were unhappy and I understand. And it definitely had an impact. I, I, I don't want to use that as an excuse, but it, it, it 100% had an impact on the on the fact we we, we missed out on the playoff. Definitely. Mm. So as as a result of that, I know that you uh, I know that you left the club that summer. But were, were you surprised to see things? I suppose get off to quite a sour start the following season. Obviously, results weren't great under Chris Wilder, and then he ended up um, he ended up losing his job and that sort of thing. Were, were you surprised that that kind of um, that kind of negative feeling, that sort of feeling of a, a divide in the squad sort of thing kind mm. of continued into the first couple of months of the new season? I will not say I was surprised because if I said that, I'd be lying because it, it was coming. It was coming. The few of the lads weren't happy with the the way things was, was run. Um, you know, the results were, 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 were very bad. I, I didn't expect it like that. I didn't expect it to be bottom and, and the gaffer to lose his job. Um, but um, I knew it would be a difficult season because, um, you know, it's different when you come in, you change the, the the training session, the players are happy, you win games, confident everything is fine. But you, you start the season, you have a pre-season, you bring your own players, <clears throat> excuse me, you can, you, you go rid of some of the players, um, some of them are here, they're no, they're no starting or no playing, they're not on the plans, they're not happy. You know, um, it was building, I, I, I can see that coming. Um, but I didn't expect them to have the, the, the bad start they had. And uh, unfortunately, the, the gaffer lost his job. But, you know, he's, he's, he, if I said I didn't see that coming, I was lying. So, yeah, fair enough. No problem. And uh, obviously, he was replaced by Michael Carrick. Um, and, and again, I know you're not at the club at the moment, but I'm sure you're keeping an eye out for Middlesbrough's results and that sort of thing. So what, what do you think of the, the job that Michael Carrick's doing at Middlesbrough at the moment? Oh, huge. Absolutely huge. And I think um, I met him a couple of weeks ago, um, great lad. And um, in fact, he asked me to come and look at training and see what they do and all that, which I will do. Um, and I think... I think this is this is just telling telling you everything about the man. You know, he's a great man, good good person. Uh, the lads absolutely love him. I love his um, calmness. Whatever you do, whatever the team do well or not, is the same. And I think that that me as a player, if I had a manager like this, I would love it because he never go too low, he never go too high. Um, he's, he he command respect. He doesn't need to shout. You know, the player absolutely love him, and the job. He's been doing so far has been remarkable, really. Even like done so well last season, unfortunately missed out. This season <clears throat> at a bad start, um, but still doing the same thing, calm, and the results start picking up. You know, and uh, I think he's, 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 he's definitely the manager. The club um, was, was was after for a long time, and I think if 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 he, if if you let him do his job and bring his own player. He, he will eventually um, take me as well to the Premier League, definitely. Brilliant stuff. And just just one or two more for me, just just on your plans, Sol, at the moment. Um, obviously, you re retired from playing 12 months ago. I know you were working with uh, with Cardiff uh, last season and that sort of thing. So what, what are you up to now and what are your kind of plans moving forward? I'm learning, Phil. I'm learning, you know, uh, doing coaching. Uh, it was very good with um, Cardiff the, uh, from January uh, for six months was tough because obviously we're fighting to stay in the league uh, with Sabri Lamucci. 
Um, you know, he's a club would mean so much to me. So, you know, it would have been difficult if uh, if we eventually went down, but we, we're glad we, we, we kept the club up. And um, like I said, I just want to carry on learning. You know, I'm doing um, everything I can to to, to learn the, the, the coaching trade, going to see trainings. Um, I'm going to go and see Michael Cowick. I'm going to go and see other manager. Uh, I just want to learn and uh, and see what happened. Um, still, um, working with Sabri. Sabri is look, looking to get a job somewhere. If we get a job, we are probably going to go with him uh, as an assistant. But I just want to learn so uh, at the minute to 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 to, to be ready for to be a manager one day. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Is that, that the ambition to become a, a number one at the moment? Obviously, you're number two at Cardiff, as you said there, you're going to kind of, hopefully going to be going with, uh, with Sabri to be uh, an assistant. So are you kind of gearing up towards uh, a move into management in the future? Yeah, definitely. That's that's always been my plan for the for the last six, seven years. Yeah, But I, I want to do it the right way because, you know, it's not because you played at a certain level for, for, for many years. That means you, you know, you, you can manage, you know, we've seen it before, top manager, top player doesn't necessarily make, make top manager. So, you know, I'm I'm happy to be number two with Sabri at the minute for whatever long, learning my trade. And um, when I'm going to feel ready, I'm going to try my luck as a number one. Brilliant. And uh, could we see you back at the Riverside one day, maybe sitting in the dugout as uh, Michael Carrick's successor? <laughs> you know what? I would love that. Absolutely love that. But uh, it's a long way to go. I'm sure a lot of Middlesbrough fans would love it as well, Sal, I'm not going to lie. <laughs> Brilliant stuff. No, that's great. Well, um, yeah, I really appreciate you where you're taking the time to uh, to speak to me. Um, it's great to see you doing well. It's great to, uh, to talk about um, your wider career, but then also in, in, in this video, uh, talking about uh, Middlesbrough as well. And uh, yeah, absolutely the best of luck for the future, Sal. And uh, yeah, here's hoping to, uh, to see you back in, uh, back in English football before too long. I appreciate that, Phil. My pleasure. Thank you for having me. No and, problem. Uh, you know, we keep in touch. Brilliant. Thanks a lot, Sol. Cheers. Anytime. Take care.